Hi everyone, my name is Morgan Bingley. I'm a first year master's student at EPFL in material science and engineering. And I'm gonna present you this video about heat transfer in a material. This video will start with a little introduction where I will give you some definitions which will be useful for heat transfer and where I will talk a bit about heat equations. Then I'm gonna present you some concrete examples that you can meet in your everyday life. In order to be able to see the next example in a proper way, we need to give some definitions. In this video, we're gonna say that heat is a form of energy. The temperature is a measurable manifestation of the stored heat. If two bodies which have different temperatures are in contact, a heat transfer occurs, transferring the heat from the warmer to the colder body. Several heat transfer modes exist. The heat conduction, which corresponds to the heat exchange between two points of a motionless and opaque solid, liquid or gas. The convection, which corresponds to a heat exchange between a wall and a fluid with a heat transfer done by the moving fluid. Finally, the radiation corresponds to a heat exchange between two walls separated by a transparent environment. As we're gonna talk about heat transfer in this video, it's important to understand how works heat equations in this kind of phenomena. First, the heat conduction law, which defines the diffusive thermal flux in function of the temperature gradient, and this relation is linearly governed by the thermal conduction coefficient, k here. Then the heat equation, which has a time-dependent term, a speed-dependent term, which corresponds to the advection phenomena, a divergence term here of the diffusive thermal flux, and finally, a heat source term, which corresponds often to chemical reaction, which are either exothermic or endothermic. Combining both equations, we get this final relation, which defines heat transfer and a heat phenomena. We're now going to apply these relations to some concrete example. As first example, a simple wall of a house with thickness E is chosen. Its thermal state is stable and there is no calorific power. A thin wall is considered with an n-directional heat flux along x-axis. The temperatures on both sides of the wall are different. T1 here is lower than T2 here. The temperature profile in the wall is researched. To solve this problem, it is adapted to use Cartesian system. The temperature only changes along x-axis and an homogeneous distribution of the temperature is weighted in the other directions. The conditions of this problem allow to simplify the heat equations presented before, which becomes such an equation. As boundary conditions, we define the temperature in x equals 0 to t1 here and in x equal e to t2 here. We then define the system and try to solve it. You can see here that the solution is dependent of e, the thickness. To be able to have a general solution non-dependent of this thickness, a variable change is done. The temperature is not in function of x anymore as it is here but in function of the ratio x over e, which vary between 0 and 1. The differential system of equation and the solution are as following. Here we define the system, and here we try to solve it. The solutions look like this. Changing the disposition of the, of the equation, it's possible to get this kind of solution. It's then possible to generalize this equation to every case doing the following transformation here. So we can now say that our solution only depends on x or e variable. Thus, it's possible to plot the temperature profile for this case. It looks like this. So we have a linearly behavior between t1, t1 here and t2 here over the x-axis it will maybe be easier to see the temperature distribution in the wall. Here we can clearly see that if it's our wall, 
we have a linear gradient of the temperature where, with here our minimum at T1 and here our maximum at T2. That's all for this first example. As a second example, a concrete wall with a thickness E is chosen. This concrete wall is hardening due to an exothermic chemical reaction like hydration for the concrete. The temperature is the same at both sides of the wall and is equal to Tw. This case is assumed as a stable and motionless case. To solve this problem, it is adapted to use Cartesian system. The temperature only changes along x-axis and an homogeneous distribution of the temperature is weighted in the other directions. The condition of this problem allows to simplify the heat equation presented before, which becomes this kind of equation. At boundary conditions, we have the temperature defined in x equals 0 and x equal to E as Tw. Then, we define the differential equation system and its boundary conditions and try to solve it. To get a general solution usable for a large amount of cases, it looks like to be easier to add dimensionality results. Thus, a variable change is done. The temperature is not in function of x anymore as before, but in function of the ratio x over e, which vary between 0 and 1 as it was explained before. The differential system of equation and the solution are as following. So the differential system of equations is this one and its solution looks like this. Furthermore, all terms that are independent of x over e are placed to the left side of the equal sign. Thus, the temperature profile looks like this. We can clearly see a symmetrical behavior in this solution with a maximum in the center of the piece, where the temperature is the higher, due to the exothermic phenomena. The minimum are at the faces, where the temperature is equal to Tw. We can also see the temperature distribution in the wall as following. We can clearly see this maximum in the center of the piece and the minima at the side of the wall. As a last example, a thin steel bar is considered during a continuous thermal treatment process. The bar is extracted from an oven heated at a temperature of T0 and then quenched after a L distance in a water bath which, at, which is at a TL temperature. The temperature profile of the bar between the exit of the oven and the entrance of the water bath is researched when a steady state is established. To solve this problem, it is adapted to your Cartesian system. As the bar is thin, a uniform temperature is assumed in its transversal section, which means the temperature field only depends on the x position. The conditions of this problem allow to simplify the heat equation presented before, which becomes this equation. As boundary conditions, we have that the temperature in x equals 0 here is equal to T0, and the temperature in x equal L, it, it's equal to TL. The differential equation system is the following, and its solution is as follows. This looks like quite complicated, but we can simplify a bit, knowing the factor rho times Cp over k is 1 over alpha, where alpha is the thermal diffusivity coefficient of the material. We still have this solution. This solution also looks like complicated, however it appears simpler rewriting in the following way. As for the previous example, a general solution is researched. In this case, this solution looks like this. We finally have that. We still have this solution here. And knowing the ratio VL over alpha corresponds to the adimensional Peclé number, which defines the ratio between advection and diffusion phenomena of a process, it's possible to simplify a bit. Here, the Peclé number is put at the denominator, and here at the numerator. 
Finally, in the same way as the previous cases, a variable change is done replacing x over l by the variable x sur l. It's possible to try to understand how the Peckle number works varying the temperature profile in function of it. Here we have the temperature profile with a low Peckle number. We see that it's almost a linear behavior as we have for the first example. However, when we increase the Peckle number, we see that it's increased the curvature of our curve. And when we arrive at big Peckle number, we, uh, we almost have a vertical line here. That's due to the speed of the bar. It's possible to show this result on the with the graphical solution of the pre temperature profile for different Peckle number. We define here a list of Peckle number, apply the, the solution on it, the graphical solution look like this. We can see that the solution for the low Peckle number are quite linear and that it becomes more and more curved as the Peckle number increase till the number of 100 here. Finally, it's also possible to present this solution in a wall allowing a variable Peckle number. Here we can clearly see that the gradient is linear when the Peckle number is low. But if we increase it, we saw that the differential of the temperature is almost on this side of the bar. So that's all for this video about heat transfer in the material. Here are my references. Thank you for watching.